Welcome back, humans. It's Saturday, and I'm back with an end of the week vent session. And before I get started, I would appreciate if you would hit that like button, hit that subscription, and turn on your notifications, because I'm here twice a week. I'm here every Wednesday and Saturday. And I got some good vents for you today. I got a little bit of fight talk, and I think I'm going to get the fight talk out of the way first, because I have some pretty good vents. I got some pretty good vents. Uh, I want to get out of, I'm, I got a lot of venting to get off my chest. And then also I found some pretty good... Um, you know, a little, little couple little articles here, and I found some uh, local dumb criminals. Not a couple of them aren't aren't local, but there's a bunch of them that are local, and I thought I would share them with you today. So, anyways, like I said, man, away we go because um, tonight's the night. There's a fight night tonight. Uh, big fight, Canelo and uh, Billy Joe Saunders, uh, Sayol Canel Alvarez versus uh, Billy Joe Saunders. And like I said in my previous previous episode, it's like hard not to say his full name. It's hard not to full name the dude, Billy Joe Saunders. You know what I'm saying? And it's hard not to, I mean, everybody just calls Canelo Canelo, even though his name is Sa Saul. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like one of those habits, you know what I'm saying? But anyways, those guys are fighting tonight, and it's going to be awesome. Uh, he's a natural person at this weight class, which doesn't really mean much because, like I said, he's about the same size as Canelo, and these guys are going to drop bombs. I mean, at least I know Canelo is. And uh, there was some weird shit going on, man. This guy was trying to fucking complain about the ring size. And he ain't never fought in the ring size he was talking about. He just wanted to be able to have more room to, like, run from Canelo. So, which makes me think he's going to try to do something, like, um, which nobody can ever really do. But he's going to try to do some shit like Floyd Mayweather. He's going to try to, like, maybe stick him with a jab and try to pot shot him and run and frustrate him a little bit. But I'll tell you what, man. That dude learned a lot of... A lot from that, that Floyd fight, and uh, he hasn't lost since, and uh, he's looked really good ever, he's been getting better and better every fight, and uh, he wants to keep moving up in weight class, but I think his size will, you know, you know, limit how high he actually wants to go in weight, but anyways, man, the Billy Joe guy, he doesn't have that much on his resume, he's got a couple good, decent names, Chris Eubanks, you know what I'm saying, um, I think Andy Lee was one of those guys that everybody knew, but Andy Lee was, eh. Eh, you know what I'm saying? But anyways, um, Canelo's got, you know, all these guys on his record, and uh, he's been putting them away. And uh, so, like I said, this guy might have a good chin. He does box pretty good. He doesn't got that much power, but I think uh, it's going to be a good fight, and I'm still uh, picking Canelo uh, to win this fight, but you never know, man. You, you, you could uh, be shocked. It's usually some of them guys you don't expect to make a fight, like, amazing fight. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes you can just tell, like, oh, man, he's going to mow through this dude. But you never know. You never know what this guy's going to do because uh, he does have a little bit of boxing skill. Not too much punching power, but he does have, like, decent boxing ability. So, you know, and, and also he's a southpaw. And they say Canelo has trouble with southpaws. Man, he hasn't had trouble with nobody in the last while. So we'll see what happens, man. I'm excited about this fight. And I uh, can't wait to see it. You know, I, I don't know about you guys, but I'll be tuning in tonight. And uh, probably the next couple of fights, uh, maybe I'll, you know, when my subscriber count gets up a little bit, I'm going to probably be doing some live coverage on some of the fights, you know, whether it's UFC or boxing. And I'll probably be doing some live coverage of some of that stuff. So you have to tune into some of that stuff. But, yeah, man, and then uh, recently, um, the other day, there was that um, press conference with Floyd Mayweather and Logan Paul fight, you know, at a weird circus show. And then yeah, everybody knows what happened, you know what I'm saying? His brother went over there, nutted up, started going crazy, and, like, jumped in Floyd's face and saying fight two guys in one night. It almost looked a little staged. I don't know about you guys. This looked a little staged to me because, I mean, you got to make it a show. They were already complaining and pushed the date back once. You know what I'm saying? Like with this circus, they pushed the date once because they weren't selling many tickets and Floyd wants to make money. You know what I'm saying? And probably Logan Paul too. You know, Logan Paul is going to get his ass beat, but no matter how big he is, he, he's going to get beat up. My man couldn't even beat this rapper that I didn't even know and nobody really knew except for like the people in that circle and my man beat the shit out of him. His brother can box way better. Not that his brother ain't that good yet. Like I said, I want to see what he gauges on a real boxer. But man, he can't. Yeah, I, I watched him get his ass beat. And everybody kind of thinks he won. I don't think so. I don't think so. But anyways, um, he's a big tall guy and everything. But when that happened, he jumped in. Uh, his brother jumped in. Kind of. I thought that was kind of shady too of his brother. Man, he came in there. 
and kind of stole his brother's shine. But he did tell his brother ahead of time that he was going to do something. And I guess he was telling his brother, you know, you know, he's his own man or whatever, but, you know, kind of trying to get him to not do it. And I guess he jumped in Floyd's face and, um, you know, snatched his hat. And then uh, you saw what else happened. You saw the escalation that happened. It looked like uh, Floyd's security guard uh, punched him and kind of got into a, a little scuffle. And they were trying to, you know, hold him down and, you know what I'm saying, and prevent, you know, Floyd from getting any injuries and possibly his brother Logan and everybody, you know what I'm saying. But um, apparently I think he got hit by a security guard. Um, I'm not sure, but it does, he does have like a black eye or something like that. But to me, I thought it was a little disrespectful only because it was a boxing legend. And I know a lot of people don't like Floyd Mayweather, but still. He still is a boxing legend, whether you like him or not. I mean, the dude is what it is. And um, I, I figure, like I said, there's boxers and a lot of people that feel this is already a joke because, like I said, there's boxers that have been in the game for 10 plus years and oh, putting their whole life in the game where these guys are just starting new and getting these giant paydays. And these guys over here, you know, ain't getting these paydays and these guys have been doing it for like decades, you know what I'm saying? And it's kind of messed up. That part I don't. That part I don't agree with. For the entertainment value, I enjoy it, but that part I just don't feel like is right. I don't feel like it's even. I don't feel like it's equal on any part of it. You know what I'm saying? Whether I just don't think that part is right because, like I said, those guys out there that've been putting in the work should be getting those kind of paychecks. And when some dude can come out of nowhere and they just throw the money out like that, it's kind of a slap in the face because you guys act like, oh, your fight didn't sell, so you're only going to get this much money. And then you're like, okay, even though it's still some good money. You take it and you listen to them guys say that shit, but yet this dude comes out of nowhere with no boxing career and they're like, boom, here's millions. You know what I'm saying? Boom. And that just shows you like where, where it's at. It's about making the money. You know, it's about the entertainment value. Whether you're knocking all these dudes out or whatever you're doing, all that blood, sweat, and tears and, and pain, no gain, you know, getting to the next round, getting down and getting back up. You know what I'm saying? Throwing that mouthpiece back in. And those guys are getting just bay checks just for coming out of nowhere. You know what I'm saying? For a little exhibition. And that's kind of, that part I just kind of don't agree with. But on the, like I said, I do agree with it on the entertainment value because it's entertaining. But I would like to see some of these guys get those shots. You know what I mean? To get those kind of paychecks. I think they deserve it. And this thing, what it did was it kind of showed you that the money's there. So all these promoters can't say nothing now when you got to deal with a little fighting. You know what I'm saying? When you deal with a little fighting. But anyways, yeah, the, the brawl broke out. Everything got a little crazy, and uh, it was just popping bananas. And uh, I kind of felt like some of that was staged. Only because I know Floyd Mayweather and uh, the younger brother and uh, Logan uh, have a history together of being friends. Um, I remember one time when Floyd, there was like an old picture where Floyd was like, I'm his manager and shit like that. And he was young, Jake Paul, and uh, like stuff like that. So I just, I know they have a history together. And I don't know if the whole thing was staged. I mean, it looked pretty serious. <laughs> I mean, it did look pretty serious. But anyways. Um, so, let me get on with the venting, shall we? A couple little things I would like to start with before I get on. Something kind of bothered me. I don't know. I mean, I guess it didn't bother me. I mean, but I still got to vent about it. I mean, it kind of bothered me for a minute. But I don't, I don't, I don't know. I guess I'm going to talk about it now. But it only bothered me for like a half a second. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Maybe it didn't. Maybe it kind of messed me up for like a part of the day. No, I'm just kidding. But anyways, Facebook groups. Now, I joined a part of them. I joined a couple of them and I didn't, you know, I, I like to, I enjoy some of these groups and I like to support all the groups. And um, like a while back, I was like, I don't know, I, I forget how, how far back it was. I was invited to a group and um, it was like the loners or something like that. And, uh, they, you know, they invited me to the group and a friend of mine who was in the group, or I don't know if he was like part of the like moderation, or I don't know if he was a part of the, uh, creator of it or whatnot. And I was like, cool, man. You know, we used to work together back in the day. We were friends, man. We used to hang out. Of course I'll support it, man. I'll, I'll jump on here and support your group, you know? And so I was on there, you know, having fun, you know, checking out all the posts. They were, you know, commenting, having fun, you know, doing those things, supporting the group, you know, showing little likes and, you know, doing those things for the group. And uh, so they were letting me post on, you know, and talk about my podcast like they were letting me at first. You know, I was like dropping little things here, promoting here, you know, trying to just entertain them, you know, because it was like the loners. I was like, hey, man, you know, you guys can enjoy this. Have fun. Here's a little entertainment, you know, while you're, you know, enjoying your loner time. Right. And uh, whatever. 
You know what I'm saying? So they were letting me in the beginning, you know, do little things here and there. And they were making my posts were making it in the in the in the feed or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And then out the blue, they just like just stop putting my post in. And I was just like, oh, that's weird. You know what I'm saying? And so I put a comment on there. I was just like, wow, really? Because it just seems like I was, you know, I thought we were like supporting each other somehow or whatever. But I guess I got I didn't know there was a rule list on this loner group. So they fucking somebody sent me a comment with a loner group and said, like, here's the rules. And you can't do your podcast and you can't promote this and you can't this and that. And I'm just like, okay, well, you did let me at first. That's all I could say about that. You know, I didn't apply. I didn't check out your rules when I accepted the group. I should have done that, which is my bad, you know, my bad. But I felt like I wasn't doing anything wrong because I'm just trying to make something out of this and having fun and looking for support and supporting people back. So I just thought I could do it because you were letting me do it at first. So whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, my bad for not looking at the rules. And some of those Facebook groups are are pretty cool and pretty fun, like I said, and I'll still support the group. But I just ain't allowed to post because whatever. (laughs) So shout out to the loners group. Anyways, I was looking on the newspaper, man. I saw this dude at a yard sale. Got a huge score. This dude bought a fucking little bowl. For like 35 bucks. And people were like, man, that bowl looks like a crazy antique, man. You should get it looked at. You should get it looked at. You know what I'm saying? It was like, um, and not like a smoking bowl. You know what I'm saying? It was like a dinner bowl, like a food bowl of some sort. So he gets it looked at and finds out this thing is worth like seven, over 700 grand. Over $700,000 for this, for this bowl. And my thing is, like, I understand things are antiques, all right? But, like, how does a bowl, like, just, like, a bowl is just worth that much money? It's a fucking bowl. I don't get it. Like, it's a bowl. Okay, just because it made it through, or is it just because who made it? Maybe it's because who made it, or what it's made of? I just don't get that part. I mean, to me, it's like you just eat out of it. I would think, I don't know, like I said, some antiques, I just don't understand how some of these antiques, like, hold value. And like I said, I understand some of them, but to me, like a bowl or a plate, I don't know. I don't know. Or like I said, if it was belonged to a famous family or a big royal family, I could understand that stuff. But other than that one, if it's just old, an old plate or an old bowl, that's an old spoon. It didn't belong to nobody. It was like a, they tore down the wool's worth and found the old spoon, you know, and that one's worth fucking a whole bunch of money. Like that, I don't get that part. You know what I'm saying? I just don't, I just don't get it. But anyways, I don't know if you guys saw this. It was going pretty viral, and uh, it was pretty funny. Um, I, I had trouble finding the audio because, um, I'm, like I said, I'm, I, well, I got the audio, but it's not going to sound that good. So I got I had trouble, you know, still unpacking things where I can get my louder speaker out here. But <laughs> uh, if you guys heard the devil baby. So, so apparently uh, this baby was, like, you know, having fun figuring out its voice. You know, it's a real little, little baby. You know what I'm saying? And uh, the baby is with their parents, and uh, they were like, you know, the baby learned how to say mama. But I guess, you know, like I said, the baby's figuring out the voice, how the voice makes noise and it changes, and you can control it and contort it and make it do things, you know, with the pitches and go up and high and down. Well, when they were like, you know how to say mama, and you can hear the mom already, like, the mom already heard it. You know, she just had to put it on camera. She was like already like, <laughs> you know, you can't, you, you can't even... Like I said, that's my favorite part of some videos when people are filming and can't even, they're just head laughing, you know what I'm saying? So she's got the camera going, telling her baby, you know, say mama, you know, and the dad's sitting there holding the little girl and kind of balancing her so she don't fall. Like she's kind of sitting up or something. And then she's like, you can say mama. And the baby looks at her and uh, she says mama, but she says it like fucking, she sounds like fucking like, like a devil baby. They're like something like a demon's in her. So all of a sudden they were like, say mama. And the baby was like, mama, <laughs> like all fucking creepy as hell. Like I said, I got shitty audio right now, so I won't do it. But I, I, I won't put you through that. You know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, she was like, it sounded like some Satan and shit. Like she needed an exorcism. Like they had to call the church and shit after the baby just talked like that. And uh, it's hilarious. But they they were used to it. They weren't scared because, like I said, they had to pull the camera out because they knew it was going to happen. And uh, that shit was hilarious. If you weren't like, you know, like I said, one of those walking in the conversation at the wrong time, at the wrong time. And you just heard like, like you turn around, like you might attack the baby. 
You might think the baby was possessed and the parents are just acting like nothing happened. And you're like, did they see it? And I'm the only one that heard it because it was a demon. And then you fucking like punched the baby and like found out, you know, the baby was just joking. You know, one of those kind of situations could happen. If you know if the baby does the devil voice, the devil baby voice, like in the wrong place. Because you could be listening in the wrong place and they could say it at the wrong place. This is like two negatives don't make a positive. It would make another another bad reaction. I'm no mathematician, but that wouldn't it, in that situation, it'd be wrong. It'd be the wrong, like religious superstitious person come around the corner and you just heard like, murr, murr, you know what I'm saying? And she turned around. You'd be like, oh, my God, it's the devil, baby. You know what I'm saying? You might attack the devil, baby. Because you'd be doing what you would feel is the right thing to do. Who would be that person? Like I said, would it be an ultra religious person or superstitious person? Or someone who watches all them like ghost hunters and shit. And ghost adventures. <laughs> you never know, but that would creep me out. Like I said, if it was one of those wrong place at the wrong time type deals. And you wouldn't do that fucking picture pose where you were like staring into the nothingness. You'd be looking away like you'd be looking with your eyes like sh this whole part would be all white. You'd be just like digging your eye into your nose cavity because you'd be trying to stare at that baby so it don't creep on you if you once you get your back to it. You know what I'm saying? You want to put your back to it and fucking have to turn around all of a sudden because the devil may be coming. You know what I'm saying? You might have to do something drastic and you don't want to hit a baby. But, you you know, if it's a devil baby, you, you might make that exception. That's all I'm saying. You never know, humans. You just never know. But that's why I'm saying the wrong place at the wrong time, man. You just got to watch that shit. You got to watch that shit, man. So this one goes for the ladies, the men, and the however you represent yourself. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, everybody does this and some people don't. You know what I'm saying? So it was a debatable question. I was talking about it at work. And then I was talking about it with some, some friends and whatnot. And uh, it was like the pros and cons. Of going commando. Now, you know, some people are like, oh, man, it's like being free. You know, there's, that's one of the pros. You just, you're, you're free. You're wild. You're out there. You're, you're, you're letting it go. You know, feel it's just more comfortable. You know, you hear those people, you know, hear everybody say those things. You know what I'm saying? Then you hear other people, you know, like, no way. What if you chafe? I've chafed when I've done it. I've this and that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All this crazy shit. You know, like there's just the pros and the cons. So like I got some situations like from, you know, all these conversations. I won't say who, like I said, but I am going to share some of the stories. So like I said, there's one where you were out there working all day and you start, you got like a bad like irritation in between your legs, like right by where the, you know, like if you were a man, it was like right close to like the balls. And if you was a woman, it was like way up in, you know, in your area. And it was not pleasant. You know, and also was very uncomfortable going to the bathroom. You know, all this kind of things. You know what I'm saying? Whoa. <laughs> so, those were some crazy, those were some of the situations about the chafing thing. Like, man, that would be so uncomfortable. You know what I mean? I've had that happen before where I wasn't going commando and just wearing jeans, you know, real denim. Not that stretchy, you know, it was new stretchy soft shit. It was like real denim. Like real denim will fuck you up. You know, the Cowboys, you get used to it. You know what I'm saying? But I'm saying like, those, you know, wearing it for a long time, you probably still got to deal with some shit. That's probably why the, uh, the inventor used to say, recommend you don't, you don't wash them. And you wonder why you ask? <laughs> probably because your natural, like, you know, your natural skin oils probably, you know, make a like a like what, like a, what an animal fur rub would be like, but inside your jeans. And that way they wouldn't burn your legs after wearing them for extended amounts of time. <laughs> Anyways, that's one of the other issues you would have. Or, you know, what if you were, I would say this would be a con. Like, what if it was like Michigan summer? Okay. Michigan summer. It's cool. If you're on the boat, you're out in lakes and all the, you know, all the great lakes and you're out there in the river, you know, having fun in the river and, you know, swimming on the beaches and doing all that shit, right? Or in a pool. But if you don't have one, and you don't have like like uh, air conditioning or central air, you know, which I did not have for a long time, you know, for a long period of time. You know, our summers get humid and hot, but like 
hot, but like like more humid. You know what I'm saying? Like just sticky ass. You we get hot, dude, but it's like more humid, dude. Like we just you're gonna stick to some shit. Like remember the little octopus thing, which I'm sure they still have. You just throw it on the wall and watch the motherfucker just, you know, stick down. You could do that with a sock or some shit, you know, in the summertime. If you wore socks, if if you did wear socks, you knew you weren't from Michigan because shit be hot as fuck. Everybody be some sandals or something, some kind of, or barefoot, fuck it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Don't even wear shoes. Wear your fucking Crocs and your sweaty and ass Crocs because those things would be slipping in our humid ass summers if you ain't in no AC. And that's no joke. Our summers just be sticky as hell. You know what I'm saying? Like just, ugh. So let's just say you're, you know, going commando, you know, oh, you know, you're going commando, feeling free, letting it all go, whether, you know, man, woman, whatever, you know, just letting it go, commando. And it's, and you're in Michigan and you're not from here, you know, your hotel has AC, but yet you're downtown, you know, with everybody out there, you know what I'm saying? Maybe you're at a taste fest when they say it was taste fest and shit. Those get crowded as hell, you know what I'm saying? And it's hot. And humid. And there's no ACs when you're outside, elbow to elbow with everybody. So you're sweating, yo. And you don't have that extra layer of, like, your underwear there to help you be a little more absorbent in certain areas. And certain areas, I mean, your butt crack, man. Like, you sweat, shit's going to run down your back. And if you got a big butt, it's going to run down your back. You know what I'm saying? And it's going to accumulate. It's going to accumulate on that little arch. And then, you know, and then it's before it runs down... Now you're going to get the rundown where it drips and you're going to get that low wet spot and people are going to think, oh man, you didn't wipe. Or what did you do there? Or you're going to get that spot where it just builds up at the top and they're like, damn, somebody called a plumber because you got some leaking pipes. You know what I'm saying? Or are you going to get that little, that little fucking try, that little fucking, uh, what is it called? Like the triple jump. Are you going to get that dot, dot and dot all the way down? You know what I'm saying? That's fucked up. And you want to have that because like I said, in Michigan, it gets hot and sticky as hell. What are you going to do about it? You know, what can you do? Because you got nothing there between you. It's just you and your denims. You know what I'm saying? It's just you and your denim jeans, and you got that drip. And so what you going to do? You're going to stay going free, or you're going to hope you run into a fan. You know what I'm saying? Hope you walk across a fan and just stop by. Or, or you know, you're going to pull that accidental drink spill to cover up, you know, the sweat spot. <laughs> so that's something to think about when you want to go and go in commando is all I'm saying. It's something to think about. It's just something to think about. In my opinion, I would think about that pretty damn hard. <laughs> so anyways, like I spoke before, I was going to speak on some, uh, dope, some dumb criminals. I found a lot of the list of some dumb criminals. And some of them happen to be from here in Michigan, from where I'm from. Right here in Michigan. You know what I'm saying? No one's safe. You know, like I said, I went after Florida and all those other places. Nobody's safe. They're not all from Michigan, but most of them are. I mean, I guess we got a bunch of dumb criminals as well. You know, and I'm going to share them with you. So cheers, humans. Hope you're having a great weekend also. And if you get a chance, like I said, you know, do some things, take some nice vitamins, and give your body a little treat now and then. You know, after you have some good you know, spirits and, and celebrate and things like that and relax and kick back. Or if you're Netflix and chilling, or if you're just chilling, or you're just flixing, or if you're just streaming whatever your service is, give yourself a little treat today. Think y'all deserve one. For whatever whatever little little thing you did, y'all deserve one somehow. So give yourself a little treat, you know? So let's get on with these dumb Criminals. A young man fresh out of prison. Young guy, you know, did some prison time. I guess when they let him out, um, he had some prison release terms that he had to follow. People with a prison history probably understand what that is. I don't. I, uh, you know, just reading this article. <laughs> so anyways, he had some prison terms. <laughs> Allegedly. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> anyways. Uh, so he was uh, had some prison terms, and I guess he broke these prison terms, which uh, whatever the case may be, they're going to come get him, and he's got to go back to prison. He done fucked up, and now he's got to go back to jail. Now he's got to go back to the big house. And not just like jail, he's got to go to prison. You know what I'm saying? Like, watch your booty prison. That kind of place. You know what I'm saying? Like, whoa. Like, squeaky time, watch yourself. 
So anyways, um, he ended up boasting on his uh, social media, which is, you know, the, you know, where the books, the Facebook place like a dumbass. And he was saying some dumb shit like, catch me if you can. You ain't going to catch me slipping on Facebook. On Facebook, humans, we know this. We know better than this. You know what I'm saying? They, they track, they trap you. They track you all the time. You can't even talk about shit off your phone, like right now, and then go to Facebook, and they're gonna fucking show you all these ads of what you was just talking about. Everybody knows that. And my man's over here like, catch me if you can. And the police been tracking him for like four days. They were like, from his his first post was like, yeah, I'm out of here, or some dumb shit. Like I done did it. <laughs> or something like his first confession was like on a Saturday. They said they were tracking him like since Saturday for like four days or some shit. So he was like, I done did it. You know what I'm saying? And then the other post said something like, we getting it. <laughs> something like that. And then one of them was a selfie in the house. He was burglaring with a phone with a stolen SIM card. Only. And a miracle human that was going to do something like that. This dude is like so, oh my God. These guys are so technical. He's young. Like I said, he's younger than, a lot younger than I am. I don't understand what he first went to prison for, but who knows. But anyways, he's just so technology dependent. You know, like thinking that like that was just like something you could just do. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, now I'm out. Let me go to Facebook and brag about it. (laughs) You dumbass. Oh, my gosh. So he was like, you ain't going to. Oh, yeah. And then the other one was like, catch me if you can. And then the last one was, you ain't going to catch me slipping on Facebook. It was you ain't going to go to Facebook jail, man. You're going to like real prison. <laughs> you dummy. And they got him. You know, they tracked him where he was at, where he was posting and all that. Then the dumbass, like I said, had a stolen SIM card. and took up selfie from the house inside. He was burglaring. Like, even had, like, a like a game system and some CDs on top and shit. Like, oh, you guys can't, you know, it's hard for you to get your PS5. I got one right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, check me out with my stolen phone, you dummy. Oh, man, you dummy. <laughs> but that's not it. This Now we're getting to some of the local guys. This One of the local dummies. You know what I'm saying? And if you out, I'm sorry. If I see you on the street, I'm sorry, man. But you are, that was dumb. I mean, let's just think about it before you get mad at me. Like, sit back and think about it from the outside, man. That was dumb, okay? Okay. So let me get on with this one. This guy, your police were looking for this dude for, like, vandalism. They was suspecting for vandalism. And they see my man, and, you know, I guess he got caught on camera somehow, or they found a picture of him somehow. It looked like a mugshot. I don't know. Like, he's been in trouble for other vandalism or something. So anyways, <laughs> so they put his mugshot on the news and, you know, on our local news. And they were like, you know, hey, man, we're looking for this guy. And he's all like sitting there like, you know, like I said, like <laughs> he's just got this look on his face. And uh, so then I guess he got mad and offended about the shot they, they put on the news and called a radio station or called a police station. Asked for like a number he could send a photo to. So he texted this number. Or text a photo to the number of the police or whatever the police never gave him and send him a better photo and said, man, you guys did me wrong. You got this is a better picture of me, man. You got me looking. He said they got him looking like a thundercat. <laughs> he, said he looked like a thundercat in his mugshot and sent the police a better shot to put out on the news. Hey, man, go throw this one out. Like, like this was going to get him some ladies or something like go throw this one out. Now, I understand ladies like a bad boy or a bad guy. You know, they like the tough guy, the bad guy, right? I don't know if this, if this is the same, but what about the tough, the tough bad guy that's just stupid as fuck? You guys still like that, dude? That dude was like, said, let me, no, let me just send you. He's that fucking uh, arrogant where he, you know what I'm saying? That, that conceited where you got to send him that photo because y'all got him looking like a thundercat. <laughs> Hell no. You dummy. Damn, you dummy. I reserve the right to call you dummy, dummy. All right? <laughs> That's a dummy card. You know what I'm saying? You get thumbs up, dummy. That was a double thumb fucking dummy. Goodness gracious. Goodness gracious, that was dumb. 
Before I get back to the local people, this one is an international. An Afghan terrorist. A terrorist. I want to do an impression so bad, but I don't want to get canceled. <laughs> when I find out I'm allowed to, I'm going to just do a lot of impressions of that stuff. So, <laughs> But they fuck with me with that fucking president shit all day, every time I fuck with the president. But anyways, look at these dumb emails. An Afghan terrorist turned himself in to re- get the reward that was out on his head or for his, you know, for his arrest and stuff like that. So he turned himself in to get the reward money. Excuse me. Could you imagine like the police's face or the or whoever the, the international or whoever the fucking people were that arrested his ass? Like when he just shows up, like was it the FBI or who put the commercial out? Like, you know, there's this much hundred grand, you know, if you bring my man, this terrorist in alive. And my man was like, man, I want to get that money. So he turns himself in to get the reward money and they just pretty much arrest him. But uh, man, that was one international dummy. If you ask me, that was one huge international dummy. <laughs> they're so dumb. They're making me sound like I put a Southern accent on my word dummy. Like dummy. You're so, you're a dummy. And I don't even mean no offense. It just happens. It's because of how dumb they are. So don't take any offense it's because take offense to them for making me do it because they're dumb. See, it happened again. It's, un- it's uncontrollable because they're so dumb. I can't control it. I can't help it because it is so dumb. <laughs> Let me get back to some of these local dummies. And like I said, if I see you out there, hey, man, you made the news for being dumb. It's like the article even said you're dumb. You know what I'm saying? Like it even said on there. You know what I'm saying? And I apologize on, on behalf of reading the article that was already posted about you being dumb. So, a man in Ferndale decided to rob a local store dressed as Darth Vader. Anyways, I'm not going to butcher the line, so I won't even say his names. But anyways, my man went into a store to rob it and... Uh, dresses Darth Vader to rob it. You would think like, man, that's a crazy costume because you couldn't tell if he was white, black, or whatever your race was because you'd be dressed like Darth Vader, right? Wrong. My man went in the store all up in the security camera's faces and then put the fucking Darth Vader mask on. Not like a Darth Vader suit. Just put the fucking mask on in the fucking store on camera. Dummy, right? That's a, I need a dummy button. You know what I'm saying? Like dumb me. You need that dummy button. He put the mask on in the store. Like it's on video. Him like you know hiding. You know what's crazy is like you're on camera the second you walk in the store. And most of the like these stores have even have them in the parking lot. All right. So you, they saw your car you came in or your bike or whatever you came in. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you you walked in the store on camera. And then you're going to go to Iowa way and like duck down. All right. You're going to go into Iowa way on camera and duck down. And then you're going to put the fucking Darth Vader, Darth Vader mask on camera on camera. As you duck down all up on the camera, you just put it on on camera. That's you. That's you. I reserve the right to call you a dummy because say that out loud. Like what you did, you walked in the store all up on the cameras and hid on the aisle way where they saw you on camera. You got a code on the speaker when they saw you duck down because they thought you were stealing shit. They were like, cord 45. You know what I'm saying? Red-handed. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. See, code red hand. You know what I'm saying? They got your ass. And But no, you didn't steal nothing yet. You fucking put the mask on the camera. They were like, oh, shit. It's going to be a fucking whatever the fucking robbery code is. Go get his ass. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Call the police. So anyways, my man didn't get very far. He, didn't get, he got as much as saying like, you know, give me the fucking money, you know, freeze or whatever the fuck he did. You know, put your hands up. Everybody get on the floor or whatever he did. And the uh, police was already there. So that's one other dummy. <laughs> I'm just saying. I got another dummy. Another one. Another one. Okay, this 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 is a man from Pontiac. 
um, geez, he was in court, you know, in court facing the judge on a case. They didn't say what the case was, but he definitely got one, another one additional while he was there. Apparently, they noticed a bulge in his pocket while they were in court talking to him and he was being arraigned or whatever. I don't know if he was even arraigned or sentenced. So he was there and, uh, you know, the police officer there, the bailiff or whoever, you know, what and whatnot, and the judge noticed there was a bulge in, in my man's pocket, like on the coat pocket. And so they lean over to tell him, hey, man, we got to go check this guy. You know, you're in court. We got to check what's going on here. So they search him. And he demands this case be thrown out because he said they searched him in court, in court without a warrant. And uh, found his pocket in his pocket. He had a big fucking bag of cocaine. I wonder if what he was being arraigned for, first of all, they didn't. I don't know. I don't even think they said it. But second of all, you go to court, face the judge. Were you expecting to get out whatever your charge charge was, man? You just showed up with a big old pocket full of yay yo. And then they fucking saw it. You know, like it was such a big bag, you fucking saw it. You know, how are you gonna do that? You know, that was like that stupid ass commercial that gets on my nerves where they were like bag alert and they, <laughs> they were in court and they see his pocket all there like and like the judge was like, Bag alert, major bag alert. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And he fucking they found that shit in his pocket. That's fucked up. That's dumb as hell. I ain't gonna go to court with a pocket full of dope. I wonder how many people did that dumb shit because they got away with it one time and didn't bragged about it on Facebook. You know what I'm saying? They put on Facebook like, "Oh man, I I brought all this dope to court." You know what I'm saying? On your social medias, you dummy. Another man here in a local mire. Try to steal over three hundred dollars worth of knives. He got out the store, made it out too, man. I guess he juked them old greeters. I guess he got by the security first, and then the greeters there. They was just like, because they were. There's usually old people over here. I don't know about you guys, but our greeters like, they're like, welcome Walmart, or welcome to Myers, or welcome to whatever. And um, they're usually really old. You know what I'm saying? They give you like the senior citizens. That's where they usually go. You know, around here. So I don't know about there. So there's probably that guy past security and he you know did the juke moves, got the whole knives, and then got to the old people and they were just like, Nye! you know, they got all scared and just let them go by. They probably froze like, it's a human, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, he got out the store, ended up tripping, I guess, and fell on the knives and stabbed himself all the fuck up and fucked himself up. And the police got him over there, you know, arrested them all bleeding with knives in them and shit. Dummy. See, I need that dummy button. Dummy. That's what you did. You was a dummy right there. You're going to run with your mom even told you never to run with like scissors, a knife, not even a fucking spoon, dummy. Like you can go run with a fucking whole, not just one knife. You had fucking over three hundred dollars with a knife. I don't even know how much knives are. But I can imagine if you got that many, it's not like little fucking little knives. You know what I'm saying? They're not little fucking fork knives like these motherfuckers got to be good knives. You dumb fuck. And then he fucking ran, tripped and stabbed himself all the fuck. Now, like, when I see knives at the store, they're usually, like, in blocks, like, them black. So, my man probably took them out of the block and was, just, like, running, probably had them all shoved in sleeves and shit, like a dumb fast, dumb pants, you know what I'm saying? Then he just fell and was, like, shanked all over the fuck up. Man, he probably shanked himself all crazy, dude. Cops arrested him bleeding, fucking steel knives falling all out of his pants and shit. Dummy. You dumb. So... I'm going to end it with a really dumb one. Like, you know, this is the colossus of all colossus. You know, what are you going to, like I said, a technological dependent individual. This only makes me think this person was young. Okay. No offense, but you guys get a lot of technology. I love y'all, but hey, you know, you know, it's true when you hear these kind of things. These kind of things make you look bad on that part. Anyways. <clears throat> A Grand Rapids, or Grand Rapids. Here I go talking to Elmer Fudd, you know. I'm here to Wesco Wabbit. You know what I'm saying? A Grand Rapids woman <laughs> was looking for a hitman, and she decided to go look through Craigslist and put it in the search list and shit. And she was looking for somebody to take her man out. 
I will injure myself. I can't slap my face too many times because of that. I might get a nosebleed because of that dumbness. You know, that <laughs> was some super dumbness. I'm going to go to Craigslist. Craigslist to go look for the hitman. So the FBI caught, you know, ear this shit. They were like, oh, <laughs> she's looking for it. Let's go respond. Let's go respond to this genius. And like, yeah, what you need done. You know what I'm saying? She was like, yeah. <laughs> So she requested a hitman, and they came and got her, and she's dumb. That's all I could say about that. You know what I'm saying? And with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, enjoyed my vent session, and I would appreciate it if you guys would hit me with a subscription, smash the like button, and turn on your notifications, because I'm here every Wednesday and Saturday. And this has been another episode of Ment to Vent. Till next time, humans. See ya. Oh, <laughs>